Hello everybody at Hint. It's my great pleasure to be with you today in beautiful Lisbon, albeit virtually in beautiful Portugal. A great pleasure to be back with uh, this event. And thanks again for asking me. We're going to have a conversation later. Uh, and I really look forward to taking that into the topics that I want to discuss. And basically the future, right? This is a big topic. There will be opportunities, there will be challenges. But here's my thing. I think the future tends to be better than we think. Because we think of the future as, of course, unknown, which it is, <laughs> but also as potentially dangerous or overwhelming. But let me tell you what the future entails and why there is hope now. I mean, uh, when we talk about hope, we have to think about this. Right? We're living in the age of COVID, the last year, 2020. We're on a corona coaster, right? We're going up and down in emotions. We're up and down in, in, in focusing. We're going up and down in uncertainty. It, it seems like life has never been less uncertain more uncertain than today. Right? I mean, it's like uh, everything is up for questioning and seems to change, everybody seems to change their mind on new regulations and how can we see into the future now? This is really important that we understand that we're not going back to normal. We're not going back to a place that was before COVID. Right? The world has changed irreparably. And in many ways, that's a good thing. I'll tell you why that's a good thing. Uh, the world is kind of upside down. Right? Things that used to be important, you know, flying and cruise ships and uh, and money and Bitcoin and you know, then a lot less important now. It's important to survive, to collaborate, you know, to figure out what to do next, to pivot, to reinvent, uh, to have stimulus for the future. I mean, the normal is ending. The normal is over. Right? And I think again, that's a good thing. And I think the challenge for us is to say, well. What does a new normal look like and, and which part of that normal is actually my normal? Because <laughs> everybody is different in every country, in every part of the world. Here's a great slideshow from CNN about the new normal. This is how we eat now, right? This is how we do yoga. If you do yoga, this is how we watch movies in parking lots now. This is how we hug safely. Uh, this is how we behave in elevators, right? The new normal. And of course, uh, this is how we work from home and this is how we do uh, how we visit the doctor now remotely in telepresence and telehealth. And this is what the European Commission does now. They give us a stimulus package. And it's been paid to Italy and Spain and Portugal and Greece, exactly the opposite of what was said last year. The new normal is different than the past. And I am here with my new normal speaking virtually, not actually going to locations. And this is what we do Zoom on Zoom, of course, with our pets. Now, just kidding. But basically what's happening here is that we're seeing deep and global paradigm shifts. And this is the way that we're thinking. Right? It's, it's like the, the world globe has been turned upside down from what used to be important. You know, that is was on the top. It's now dropping to the bottom again, flying and cruise ships and, and international vacations. And, and now we have different priorities, right? We have priorities of health. That is a very big one. Of technology, of doing things remotely, of being happy with the state of figuring out solutions, of collaborating. And of course, some, of, some people are using those priorities to do things that aren't so good and creating dictatorship uh, based on technology or completely ignoring what could be done with healthcare and not coming up with solutions. Right? I call this sometimes the great transformation. Well, not sometimes, I call it the great transformation a lot because it's really important that we think of this as an opportunity. This is not the Great Depression. It may have as much impact in terms of economics, I mean, especially in Portugal, right? Numbers are, are, are looking pretty hefty right now. And, and the second wave of uh, not just Corona, but also of the recession is coming. So, you know, it's an L-shaped recession, down, 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 staying down. We don't know for how long. I would estimate the end of next year, 21. Many people say Europe, beginning of 22, right? Things are changing and we have to figure out how can we apply this to our reality. And here's the result of this current crisis. Right? And this is taken with a grain of salt and a bit of humor, right? Big tech everywhere, right? Next thing, of course, big health. The vaccine, treatments, all kinds of things that we're inventing, international collaboration, believe in science is back. Healthcare is going to get trillions of euros in new funding, biotechnology, genetic engineering, CRISPR-Cas9, you name it, it's all part of that solution. Money is floating there. Big state, parenthesis, means the state is doing many things that, that they weren't supposed to do before, like mingling in our daily behavior and, and paying us a, a basic income so we can stay on our jobs. And governments are looking at, at you know, what we wear and how we interact and, 
you know, I, I think generally speaking, big state is not always a good solution, but we're seeing this right now as a standard thing happening, especially around Europe. And it's really important to trust the state and to, and to also get politicians to repeat that trust, right, and to, to, uh, to mirror it back to us. Like, you can see in the countries where trust hasn't worked, US, Brazil, South Africa, maybe UK, things are not looking up very well. In countries that have trust in the government, and Portugal is one of those, and Switzerland, where I live, you know, things are getting better, and we're, we're collaborating, and we're sticking with the rules. Right? <laughs> so that's very important. And the last one is Big Green. Believe it or not, this, has, this will have a huge impact on healthcare, because we're going towards a future where it's going to be more important to have more of a holistic view of the world, people, planet, prosperity, purpose, right? not just GDP. We're going to go be beyond GDP as a uh, as an understanding. And many companies in Portugal have already done this, including one of my clients that was just at BA Glass um, just a few weeks ago, of course, virtually, and, and thinking of, about their sustainability approach. All of those things. So Big Green is really, really an important thing that I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, right now, I'll give you some stats. You know, Basically, what's happening is consumers have seen changes in every part of their lives. Uh, I mean, literally every part. In just the last six months, work, shopping, consumption, learning, communications, playing, entertainment, not all of that is good, of course, right? because now you know, we're looking at things like Netflix addiction and isolation coming from working from home. It's not all good, but we have changed ways. I think there is three years' worth of digital transformation in the past six months. I think Satya Nadeva from Microsoft said, uh, three years of transformation in three months. Well, now I think it's more like six months, but we have changed the way that we do almost everything. Some of that will come back in different ways, but many things will stick, and we're going to apply what we've learned. We're going to apply that we can work from home. We're going to apply that we can do telehealth. That's going to change our society. And societies like Portugal and, again, Switzerland are not that easy to change. You know, we have a lot of tradition, uh, we have a lot of things that we value. So that's going to be a process, I think, of that transformation coming through, and especially for older people and for people who are uh, not uh, really uh, rich enough to buy fancy devices yet. So the digital divide, I'll talk more about that later as well. But what we have to do in this post-corona or with corona future, we have to learn how to turn around, to pivot. And it's nothing more important than pivoting in healthcare because many things in healthcare haven't worked. Uh, whether it's a pharma industry in so many ways, or taking care of elderly, or of course public health care, and so on and so on and so on, right? We have to pivot, find new ways to go. Well, pivot means turning around on a dime, coming up with a new idea. Right?